Thank you very much, Amy, and brilliantly on time. Um, the next uh, student talk is by Jamie Cranston, who's uh, he's a NERC PhD student at Exeter, and is going to talk on cl uh, climate change and checklists, monitoring natural colonists through biological recording. Jamie. Uh, hi, thanks very much for letting me speak to you. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, entering the second year of my PhD at the University of Exeter, uh, and I'm also working with the NBN and the Centre for Ecology of Hydrology, and I'm looking at natural colonists. So I guess the first question some of you might be wondering if you've not already spoken to me is, what is a natural colonist? So I'm defining these here as the species which have arrived into the UK through natural dispersal, not by humans. Uh, and a native in the region where they found. So um, why might these be interesting to look at? So if we look through time, we can see that those are definitely increasing. So the red line is the number of natural colonists. The blue line is uh, overlooked residents. So you can see that it's not just an effect of recording, evidence, eh, recording effort. There are genuinely more species arriving into the UK. Um, so this is a little case study. So this is a species I'm sure many of you will know blue-tailed damselfly, which is spreading northwards. So um, we see here its range in 1982 and 2012. So why we should care about natural colonists? This recent study um, found that it was driving, the blue-tailed damselfly was driving declines in emerald damselfly in the regions where it was spreading into. So um, this is the density of colonists. And it, as you can see, as it increases, the native, previously native emerald declines. Um, but there's another side to this issue. So apart from worrying about the effects these new species might be having on native wildlife, they themselves could be threatened. So this is another probably familiar species. So this is the marsh tip, which has had a 90% decline over the last 30 years, and that's been linked to climate change. So we don't have very good data on what these species which are moving into the UK might be uh, their population trends in their na currently native regions. So they might be of concern. And um, we obviously can have, we have, we can choose to take actions which affect the fates of these natural colonists. So this is Chetty's warbler, which arrived in 1973. And this work shows that the majority of these species, when they first arrive, they tend to arrive in protected areas. So as you can see uh, here, this is the number of pairs going up. This is the proportion of protected areas. So there's a kind of landing pad effect where when they arrive for the first time, they arrive in protected areas and then spread out, so those areas are really important. And this is another little case study, um, the golden plover. And uh, habitat management also has a huge effect. So this graph shows the effect of drainage uh, on the number of crane flies, which you find on upland soil. And crane flies are great because that's what the baby golden plovers eat. So if uh, there are less um, crane flies, then um, the golden plovers have a lower sort of reproductive rate. So um, by increasing the moisture in the soil, i.e. by stopping artificial drainage, we can ameliorate the effects of climate change, and that can help sort of natural, that could potentially help colonists move in and colonize suitable habitat. So there are these sort of two questions of what, what impacts these might be having, which we don't really know, and whether there's a need to conserve any of these species, which we also don't really know. So I'm just going to talk briefly about my plan for my research over the next two and a half years. So. The first bit I'm going to be working on is some um, invasive species distribution model. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're invasive, just that they're not at equilibrium with their environment. I'm going to be looking at their rates of spread, and I'm going to be trying to model their impacts through these Bayesian occupancy models. And this is the bit which I'd really like you guys to get involved with, is um, I'm interested in getting some opinions about what stakeholders and the public think about these natural colonists, these new arrivals, how we're currently managing them, how we could be managing them, and sort of any issues, or even how you, how you would define a natural colonist is a question that I'm interested in. So um, if you have any thoughts, I'd love it if you get in touch with me. Uh, I'll be around by my poster after this talks, if you've got a moment, or email or Twitter are all good ways to contact me. Thanks very much. <laughs>